Welcome to Jugendhakt Austria. My name is Magdalena. I will co-moderate today's presentation together with Philipp. Um, I am working for Open Commons, which is an initiative of the city of Linz in Austria. And um, with the support of the city's IT department, KT Linz, and our great partners, Open Knowledge Foundation Germany and Mediale Pfade, we do hackathons since uh, 2016 now. Um, we are doing Jugendtech and other coding workshops to allow young people to use technology not only for consumption, but to be an active creator and help shape our society and environment. Um, our credo is to make the world a bit better with code. So our participants bring their own ideas into life, as you will see in just a few moments. What the benefit is still is that we could have quite international participants this year. Um, therefore, we have a special uh, cooperation. And um, I want to say hello to Marion Friedl from As Electronica Festival. So uh, I was asked to um, tell something more about the youth exchange project in general. So uh, the project exists now for some years. In the past, we invited people from uh, different countries to us, to Austria, here in uh, the Ars Electronica Festival here in Linz, uh, to do projects together for five days for the whole festival. So in the last years, the, um, we did some development of games, filming a video, creating high resolution uh, animations, or making a Rube Goldberg machine, um, which is a chain reaction machine. Uh, maybe you all know that. Um, so the core idea of this is um, to get together, um, to do a project together, to discover, meanwhile, uh, similar similarities and um, interests, uh, similar in interests, uh, lay the foundation for uh, future projects, maybe doing them together afterwards, and lasting international friendships. Um, but as you all know, this year um, doing trips is a bit difficult. Uh, so uh, we came up together with uh, Jugendtech Linz, um, the C C3 Budapest, uh, the MBN 21 Dresden and the Arctic Lab in Amsterdam uh, with this remote hackathon, uh, which you all guys have been doing now on the computer the whole day online. So well done. Um, I hope you had a good time. Uh, I'm thrilled to hear more about everything and Magdalena, back to you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Marion. Um, yeah, we spend a productive day together and I think we will hear more um, with Philip now. So coming up is the first of three groups now. They are called, or their project is actually called Bet Your Friend. Uh, in the group are Benjamin, Jakob, and Jonathan. The mentors were Isabella and Tobias. And um, I would like for you to present now. So, um, so, you all know the situation. You sit on the couch and watch Netflix. And there's a plan. Uh, your plan is to be more active and do more sports. And yeah, the only thing is that you um, need maybe a sport mate to have the motivation. And um, you have a friend in mind, there's Sarah. He, she's a couch potato as you are, and you're calling her and she said, oh yeah, um, we could do sports together, it's a great idea. Mm, there's just one problem. Um, as we all know, uh, after three days, uh, those, uh, the motivation will be gone and nobody would do sports. So there's now a challenge app, um, which is called Bet Your Friend, um, to, uh, which leads you to make more sports, do more outside and, and gets you more on your bike. 
So um, at first you um, can define a goal, what you want to do. For example, uh, increase your bike kilometers. So you want to go more with a bike. Um, um, to you, you could do a um, you could do a um, bet upon steps. Who who's, um, who does more steps in a week, or who can burn more kilocalories? And um, you can um, define a penalty for the loser. So what the loser has to do, uh, maybe the loser has to do something for the winner. And um, but why don't why do we need an app for it? Um, we need an app that. Sarah is not cheating, or maybe I am not cheating. And uh, so the app is uh, keeping track of the data and your movements. Uh, uh, if you are actually driving the bike, uh, or if you're just faking and saying, oh yeah, I drove this week 100 kilometers. So uh, we need this app to prove that you are saying the truth. Um, we're doing that, um, I think Benjamin will take, um, um, get a closer look later about the technical specs. Um, how we're doing is with uh, position data um, or even data from the smartwatch. Um, so, and I can explain for now how the front end looks like. Um, I think you can see now the app on, uh, on my screen. It's, uh, it should be a smartphone app, it's just simulated here. So, and uh, are you ready for the challenge? And you can type in your name. It's Jacob, and as I said, my friend is Sarah. Then I click next. Sarah does the same thing, just the other way around. Her name's Sarah, my name Jacob. Um, and then, your bet. I can do more kilometers on a bike than Sarah in a week, or steps, or kilocalories burned. In my case, I want to do more kilometers on a bike than she does, so I click that. Okay, now I can um, say, oh, what, uh, what should Sarah do, um, is doing if she is losing? So, hmm, I am very hungry right now, so maybe she, um, in the end of the week, she could cook me a dinner if I'm winning. So, um, the loser has to uh, cook a dinner for me. But it doesn't, um, See, it seems like so good. We are in day one, and um, she she was more active than I am. Uh, you see it on the graphs. Sarah did more, um, more by kilometers than I am. I was doing, and um, I just skipped all the other days. It, uh, it's not going to, to be better, so I just go to the uh, solution. Unfortunately, Sarah is the winner and I have to cook a dinner for her. So that's my penalty and um, I, I lost this, this challenge this week. But uh, I have another try next week and I'm much more motivated next week to beat Sarah in this. So I can just click rematch for next week and the same thing, thing starts again. That's um, how the app should look like. And um, in the end, what could be achieved is, um, of course, a better fitness for you and Sarah. And maybe also a strengthened relationship between you two because you have a topic to talk about and um, a bet. Yeah, um, but in long term, you, it could improve mobility because um, you can step on bikes instead of cars if you go to work. Um, you can, um, every day, you could, you could make, I don't know, 10 kilometers just going. Um, um, to work with a bike instead of a car or, and staying in traffic jams and you can just collect kilometers on, on the way. Um, yeah, and in the end it saves CO2 too, so it's good for our environment, it's good for our mobility. That, that is the long-term goal if everybody's using this app. Um, but now we have to talk about the technical implementation because just like that it won't work. Uh, we have to um, track the data and validate the data. So um, that's where we had another team in our, in our group which um, had the question how could we um, keep in track of the data and um, do the technical things, the back end. So that's why Benjamin um, can present his uh, or from his group 
uh, for solutions. Yes, so um, the project have another part, which you can see there. Um, the programming is based on HTML. Um, we programmed it on a website called Code Sandbox. Um, we made the part of the app which is responsible for the betting information. Uh, here you can see a list of bets, um, which shows uh, your friend's name, amount of the bet, and the main bet. Uh, it also shows the date of the bet. Um, um, the first section, um, you can type in your information, like your name, uh, your bet, and your amount of bet, which will be shown on your friend's devices. Um, uh, also, you could see some numbers um, on the top of the screen, which is uh, at the moment not here but uh, there are GPS coordinates. It is provided by your browser's location. It shows your location where the bet happened, which can be useful. Um, I think the project was a good experience for me. Uh, I programmed and also learned HTML for the first time. Uh, at the beginning, I was hopeless because uh, I didn't know how to start, but uh, afterwards my mentor helped me out and teach me the basics um, of HTML programming, which was very useful. Also, the designing uh, of the project was very interesting and fun. So overall, it was a great experience. Thank you so much. What a great project. already invited the people on stage. So these are uh, Bo and with her in the team was Julieta who can't Which be with here. Yeah, she isn't here. We're sorry. And uh, the mentors were Hansi and Pia. So welcome. So, well, um, for Julieta and I today was uh, a really a uh, new experience because we both yeah we did a little bit with programming but not a lot now yeah i heb uh, geleerd om hoe je dat html html te programmeren voor een website en informatie opzoeken in het engels en dat verzamelen en in een samenvatting te schrijven en ja een website van te maken uh, at first we learned we searched information about our uh, topic that was climate change and when we had something uh, pia was going to tell us something about how to program a website because we never did it so uh, it was really difficult but actually on the end i find it really easy because i thought that i needed really difficult software or something to do it but actually I can do it too, so not really good, but still. Um, our topic was uh, we did something uh, with solar panels and if they are actually that good for our climate as we think. Because, um, yeah, uh, the making of it costs a lot of energy. So in uh, the Netherlands or in Europe, they are made with... Uh, good energy but in china or in japan they're made with a few i don't know fossil energy so that is 
also bad for the environment. So in the end, we came up with this. And here on our website, you can see how the solar cells are made in 10 steps. And here are the good and some bad aspects about uh, solar panels. So um, we also added a uh, no, uh, checkbox in the corner and then we can switch it to a dark theme. So we learned how to do that and it was really nice to learn, but uh, it's a nice aspect. And yeah, I think for Juliette and I, the process was more the main goal actually than the outcome of it because yeah, it was really, really nice to do, but also a challenge. Uh, I think that's everything. Thank you so much. It really looks nice. I don't know how to switch between light mode and dark mode. So um, that's something I should have learned today, but I didn't. Um, I have yeah. a question, maybe. Why, why, why did you choose the topic of solar panels? You, you were in the group dealing with climate change. Why solar? Um, well, we were, we had a different thing, but the main thing was that uh, people are publishing it like it's really good. Like this, you have to do this, you have to, this is the thing we can do to change the world. But actually the making of it is also really harming for the world. So it's like, it isn't, it isn't right actually. And the information that is on the internet for uh, a lot of people, uh, is not the right information because they want to make money out of it. So, yeah, that's why we choose for this. Okay. This is right. Yeah. Yes. Um, and do you think you will, you um, will continue in programming websites? Do you want to do it again? Are you motivated? Yeah, I think um, I, uh, for my, for my study, I can use it. It would be really nice because there are so many options you can do with it that you can't when you just use a regular layout or something or so the options are limit not limited as in most cases. That is super nice. Thank yes. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. Coming up is a project which didn't have a name half an hour ago. So I will, I'm very curious what the name is. Nitya, uh, the stage is yours. Our, uh, our main topic was um, surveillance and net politics. So first of all, we looked at the problems uh, uh, that come into surveillance. So one of the main problems was that uh, the single companies collecting lots of data, uh, they use that and they, they collect the data, but not only do they keep it, but they also use it like they want to, uh, which is not always how we want our data to be used. So we then brainstormed ideas for how this could be changed. Uh, so then we came up with the concept of combining gameplay and generative art to raise awareness for why companies collecting our data is actually a big problem in the actual world. So then um, we came up with a demonstration 
uh, which shows why the surveillance is a big problem uh, and that we don't have to hide that it's a big problem because it's been uh, happening all over the world all the time. But we came up with a small game to show how this uh, problem uh, is only getting bigger by the day. Now I hand it over to Samika to tell you more about it. We just wanted to create a platform to show our, how our data is being engulfed. So with the help of coordinates, we, in JavaScript, we created a game. In this game, there are some dots representing our data and a square which represents us and a big circle called Big Zark, who is engulf who is actually our enemy, who is engulfing our data. So here we are trying to save our data from Big Zark, who is constantly growing and consuming our data. And we are not able to do anything about it. So in the process of to stop him, we have to move our cursor to collect the data and save it from him, to uh, save it from him, engulfing it. I would like Noah to introduce with the, uh, you with the technicalities required for it. Yeah, like uh, Samrita has uh, said, and uh, you can already see um, that's how the game looks like. So the green square is the player and jots the data, and you can actually collect it. Uh, in the top left corner, there's also a little counter implemented um, to count how much data is saved and how much is lost to Facebook or Google or another evil company. Uh, you can also try to uh, like just um, uh, do something about it and make the circle a little smaller, but it doesn't help much. And in the end, the circle uh, contains everything. Yes, uh, that's the, the code. It's uh, beautiful, it's uh, colorful, and I think that's the, the most important thing about it. And it works. Yep. And then our project kind of had like a second uh, project within it. And so what we're thinking about is that we kind of want to find a way to visualize the data that Google collects about us. And so I don't know if you all know that, but um, there's a service called uh, Google Takeout where you can um, request to download the data that Google collects about you. And so we did that. And um, we went through the files and to be honest, it was very creepy because so um, apparently I've been using Google um, since 2014 and back then I wasn't really concerned about privacy because I was um, yeah not not that old <laughs> um, so what we did is that we took a look at the data sets first um, and so our initial idea was to create some kind of generative art based on that so for example if the hours of YouTube videos that you watch per week uh, is I know above five or something maybe you would get a you know a red background and then if you send more than past week you would maybe get circled stuff like that so we thought that that could be a good idea but given the very limited time and um some problems that we encountered um we didn't really get there but we tried something else um and so our main problem was that the data that we had to handle was very, very sensitive. So we used my data for this um, and my laptop isn't the best. So it kept crashing, um, which I think is um, okay because we had huge files, obviously. Um, but then we found smaller data sets. Um, but still, that what was difficult is that when we thought, for example, we could just simply use another laptop because we did peer programming, so we could have just chosen a different laptop. Um, even though I trust all the people in my group, um, I would not necessarily give them my location data from the past five years or six now. But um, that was that was a problem that we've encountered, um, and just the size of the um, of the files was just 
um, larger than anything I've ever worked with. So um, that was a little difficult. But then something that um, we decided to do was just to pick like seemingly random things and just maybe plot them. And um, this is kind of like where we got. Um, so if you scroll up a little bit, Noah. So the wonderful scatter plot, <laughs> um, which doesn't uh, really have a title or a description of the axes yet. So what is plotted there are my YouTube subscriptions. Um, and the x-axis is the length of the title or, or the name of the channel. And on the y-axis, you can see um, the length of the description that the channel gave themselves. And this is just like a proof of concept. Like you can, you see that like we were able to extract that data and then next step would be to visualize it in some kind of pretty way. And for us, it was important that when we continue this after the hackathon, there's also some degree of randomness in it. So maybe we'll just select like five of your um, subscriptions or something so that each time, um, even if you execute the program a couple of times, it still looks different. But then maybe you can go down a little bit. So for example, that is from my Google search history. I know I turned it off a while ago, so it's not um, the most accurate, but those are 27,000 search terms that I could take a look at there. Um, and so we analyzed them. And so you can see that almost half of them are .com or enten.com um, and stuff like that. Um, and then another thing that we did that we couldn't find a way to visualize yet was that we kind of computed the average location um, from Google Maps. And obviously, like some people might say that that's not a smart thing to do because the average location, for example, if you're in Europe one day and in the US another day might be somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, but we thought it was still like a fun thing. And um, also it wasn't really about like creating something that makes sense, but rather like, for us to see the data that Google collects. Um, so that was um, an educational project for us too. And just going through like the data that was, that was interesting. Um, I think in the future, um, we want to continue working on that and especially like on the generative art content. And what we're thinking about is that if in the game, if you kind of like collect one of the points, we would like that to represent like one data set or something that um, Google has about you. And then the background could like change according to um, the data that you now have or that Google now has. So yeah, we were thinking that you could kind of integrate them both in that way. I think I talked way too much. So um, yeah, I think that was it from our project. Don't worry, perfect. It's a super project. Thank you very much, all of you. Yeah, so I um, think everybody sees that the outcome is amazing. Um, thanks everybody who participated in today's hackathon. You've been doing really a great job. Um, never mind if you already had um, experience before or if you were just beginning, it was really great. Uh, great to have you with us um, remotely, of course. And we hope you enjoyed the day as well. Thank you very much from me as well. Thank you for having me to host this and for making these great projects. And um, thank you to all the viewers online who are actually with us and are actually asking questions on YouTube. So I had a very interesting conversation with somebody who was really interested in all the projects. So you made an impact and that's what Jugendtakt is about, I think.